In this video, I'm going to show you a brand new Easter egg quest that was just added with DMZ Season 4 on the Koshai Complex map. Even though we just got a brand new map in DMZ, they're adding Easter eggs to the older maps. The rewards you get for it are pretty sweet, so let me show you exactly how to do it. Now, some prerequisites before you go into the complex, you need to get the car battery and jumper cables. Just look for them in any gas station on our Masra and then make your way into the complex. Now, whichever entrance you chose, you need to just complete that puzzle until you are able to go out into the chemical plant, also known as the night vision area and once you're in there you want to go into one of the huts to pick up an r4d detector once you've got the r4d detector you need to go to this side of the chemical plant where you will notice on the wall will be a flashlight lighting up a electrical panel and with the jumper cable and the battery you want to insert those in and then to the left and right of you you'll now be able to activate a button to open the bunker doors that will lead you into the alpha cluster once you've got that make your way to the complete opposite side of the alpha cluster room where you're going to find two sentry guns and some really difficult AI. So be sure to take them all out first. Once you've taken both out, you'll notice the sentry guns were blocking a door with a keypad. And if you hold your R4D detector at the keypad, you'll see there'll be a secret code of three Russian letters. Make sure you take a screenshot of that, but around the alpha cluster, there's going to be four different blackboards that you need to look at with your R4D detector and take a photo of, because somewhere in this photo is gonna have one of the three Russian numbers that you're gonna need to use the schematic to work out. Somewhere in the image, there is going to be a number that links up to that alphabet letter that you're looking for. The first blackboard is right below the keypad. In the middle of Alpha Cluster, if we go down here, you'll see we have another blackboard, so take a photo there. Just below this section, there is going to be another blackboard, so take a photo there. And on the opposite side of the room, there is also another blackboard, which will be the fourth one to take a photo there. And what you need to do is very carefully inspect all four of those blackboard images, because somewhere you are going to see that there is going to be a number with an arrow pointing towards a Russian letter. Some of them are very big and obvious and others, they are very hard to see. So definitely pay attention and take a look. But you're going to be linking these Russian numbers in the order left to right from that code on the wall. The code will be different every single game you play. But for us, we knew that the second and third numbers were zero and nine. So we just brute forced the first number and eventually we managed to work it out and the secret room was unlocked. Now, usually you do this just to get one of the heated madness blueprint parts, but added in season four is this new item being a diamond bit drill. You'll see it here on the table. You want to go ahead and pick that up as that is part of this brand new Easter egg. You now need to get into the factory admin room and then get into the factory wing where you take take on both of the bosses of the map. Now, last season, the KV broadside was the best weapon to use against these bosses and nothing has changed. It's still absolutely incredible. What you want to do is take down the Rhino, which shouldn't take too long at all with that broadside. And then after that, it's going to spawn in a load of tier three enemies towards the right side of the room from an elevator. Once you've taken those out, there's going to be a door to the right that is now unlockable that you can go in, take down the sniper boss. Now, there are a ton of laser traps that are in your way as you're making your way to it. It, so be extremely careful. I'm sure you've probably done this boss a few times by now, so you're very aware of it. But if you hear the sound of lasers, you probably want to prone and crawl underneath the lasers and then disable the traps. But eventually, once you've taken down the sniper and you've taken down all the AI, you want to make your way over to the new prompts you get once you pick up the key that the sniper dropped that you'll then use in a lock to open and get access to a secret room with the weapon case inside. But to the left of the door that you unlock with that key, there is now a brand new safe. And this save can only be opened if you use the diamond bit drill. Now this works just like any other normal safe in DMZ, although this takes a considerably longer amount of time to open than a normal safe would. So just be prepared for this because it genuinely will take you about two minutes of in-game time. There will also be a wave of tier three AI that will spawn from elevators down below and make their way up to you. So be prepared for a bit of a gunfight, but eventually when you do finally unlock the safe, and inside you will find one of each specialty vest being the stealth vest, the medic vest and the comms vest, as well as a Dr. M's lab notebook worth a thousand dollars 
and a bunker safe note. If we go ahead and read the bunker safe note, it says in Russian, and so it is official. We will build the DRC based on the success of the DRD and its success in chemical weaponry. We must keep this highly confidential, especially building 21 and what we intend to do with it. Signed off with the letter K. Well, there's been quite a few different bits of intel within season three and season four signed off by this mysterious character called K. There is a new note that can be found within the alpha cluster that says Mikkel don't worry, our Spetsnaz group will secure the new Building 21 site the same as we did for Koshai, albeit we will need a new name to keep us under the radar from prying eyes K. Now thanks to Reddit user USplitzerFX who broke this all down so well, we can reveal the identity of K. As the shopkeeper inside the Koshai complex is an ex-Crown operative who was sent to the complex to wipe out all evidence of Crown's involvement in the construction of bunkers and the gas. But the most recent letter that we've shown you is signed K, which is the same as the Crown instructions to the shopkeeper, which confirms that the Spetsnaz operative in charge of helping Mikkel develop the gas is the same person given orders to Crown, which is Kony. And Kony is a Russian private military company who intercepted an American military convoy in Al Mazra, and that convoy was part of an operation conducted by General Shepard and carried out by Philip Graves' Shadow Company. And following the death of Philip Graves and the downfall of Shadow Company, Kony operatives on Ashika Island would be targeted by remnants of Shadow Company's forces and their new leader with Kony operatives remaining active within the combat zone on the Isle. Now, if you are confused who Kony are or you've not played the campaign whatsoever, then let me fill you in really quickly. The main basis of the campaign is that Shadow Company and Task Force 141 team up because there are a bunch of missiles which have been mysteriously stolen from our own hands and the people that steal those missiles are actually Kony. Within the very first mission, of the Modern Warfare 2 campaign where we go to track a missile, we find that the missile is our own, but for some reason it's in the wrong hands and that's due to Kony. But essentially, Kony is Russia's in-universe equivalent of Shadow Company. And when you factor that into what the rumors are for the next game, and we know how the campaign ends, where clearly it's going to be focused on Makarov and the ultra-nationalists, it is very likely that that is all going to be connected. Makarov and the ultra-nationalists and everything combined, such as the Zakayevs, the Kony, everything all leads back to Makarov, which is very, very exciting to see how that leads into the finale of season five for Modern Warfare 2 and how it ties into the beginnings of the next game. You also have a completely unknown faction fighting within Vondal, and I personally believe that the people behind the Vondal attack are Kony. And as we go through with all the different factions, we learn that White Lotus, Shadow Company, Phalanx, and Black Mouse are all working together and going after whoever's behind the Vondal attack. And to make things even more exciting, there are some leaks and rumors that we're going to be getting Philip Graves as one of the main operators in Season 5, meaning that Shadow Company are going to be back in the forefray as one of the main factions for Season 5. I personally don't believe that Philip Graves is dead. I mean, we didn't see a body. I don't think he's dead whatsoever. What seems like a pretty tame Easter egg quest to get some new medical vests has turned into a full-on storyline thread that is exciting for those that follow it. I hope you found this useful, ladies and gentlemen. If you did, a like rating would be seriously appreciated subscribe as well and i'll leave a link down below to splits at fx's reddit thread so you can read over this new storyline for yourselves